coherence of policy, I really don't know in what perspective. I can't really say that I can give a very quick answer to this question. One policy can also uh, be good in one way, but then in another field, uh, cause different problems. It can be compared to domino. It means uh, implementation of the right policies on the African continent which can lead to its being transformed. We see international uh, uh, policy uh, to be uh, about everything and not just about development aid. Policy coherence for development is that we're not giving development aid with one hand and taking it back because of unfair trading, for instance, or fishing their seas empty on one hand and giving development aid on the other hand. That's very incoherent. It's, it's a really very important issue because many of the regulations we have here or attempts we have here can frustrate development in Africa and sometimes that frustration is much higher and much more influential than all the good attempts we make in development aid. You don't want any policy of the European Union, be it trade or agriculture or fisheries or whatever, go against the objective of poverty reduction. Take for instance fisheries policies. If our fisheries industries, like in Spain, go southward to, to Africa and take all the fish they can get, we can give all the money we can, we can have to the, to the people in Senegal or Mauritania, but if there's nothing to fish, their fishermen will die anyhow. They, have to, they need sustainable bases to have their own economy, their own economic growth. So our fisheries policies should not go against the interests of local fishermen and women in developing countries. That's very important because if you look at the fishery agreements that the EU makes, for example, with West Africa, that has a direct effect on the ecosystem in Africa, on the uh, social consequences for, for the local fishermen. So it's very important that we not only look how much we can catch there and export on the global market, but also what are the effects for the local communities and the, and the ecosystem. And you know what the funny part of it is? It's actually by in European Union law, it's forbidden. We have a, uh, in, the, in the Lisbon Treaty, we have an article, it's Article 208, I'm sorry to be technical, Article 208 is my Bible and it says that everything we do in international affairs should not harm our goal uh, on development, which is poverty eradication. So our trade, our defense, uh, our investment policies should not harm development. But from day to day, our daily routine is actually harming development. Because uh, people like uh, to agree on the intentions, but when it comes to real action, um, uh, it uh, hurts. This has to do with political will. Uh, in the end, everything is politics. The short-term interest of the European Union and of industries inside member states of employment inside the member states are so powerful, these interests, that it is very difficult to have these interests balanced against the interests of citizens in the developing world. They can wait. At the end of the day, it's a political decision to choose for your own economy and not for the economy of developing countries. It won't, it won't be my decision, don't get me wrong. I wish we take into account uh, uh, the fact that people in Africa need more coherent policy. I wish we take into account that they have to transform their own economies and that's costing the Western world money and that's why we're not making progress on many of those issues, unfortunately. You should not let, let the one solidarity kill the other solidarity. You cannot be sol you show your solidarity towards fishermen in Spain and let fishermen in Mauritania die. But well, we have to go to a position where people see it as a win-win. Um, the goal is to, have, to fight poverty, to have uh, equal trade, to have uh, um, um, uh, climate change adaptation and etc. Um, so it's not only about, well, we have to spend money on it, but we have to have the correct policies to, uh, to make it a win-win situation. There needs to be more negotiations between the different departments within Europe and also within the Netherlands, for example, to make sure that decisions are not like contradicting each other. Public pressure is very important from civil society in Europe 
and from developing countries towards the European Parliament so that we can be in this political debate armed with arguments and public pressure from the field. Well, the, the government, and uh, Knape in particular, uh, he has to uh, have the guts and the courage to talk to his colleagues about this important issue and uh, to make sure that his colleagues uh, act on uh, making development effective uh, and efficient. Uh, because he cannot do it alone. He needs effective policies on agriculture, trade, economics, uh, finance. And he needs this minister to start acting. Policy coherence for development is in our interest, in the interest of European citizens. If we want a stable world with peace, with rights for every, citizens, for every citizen and a sustainable development, you cannot do this if you overlook the interests of citizens in other continents. Make sure you take into account the interests of the people in the developing countries. It's ridiculous to, on one hand, give development aid give money from the Dutch taxpayers and on the other hand take so much money from Africa and give it back to Dutch society, that doesn't make sense. So please get your act together. Uh, Mr. Knape, talk to your colleagues uh, in the economic departments, talk, talk to your uh, um, uh, colleagues in business and uh, convince them that we need coherent policies and we need them now and not tomorrow.